Aloha class, I'm going to share with you how to calculate chemical reactions at different temperatures. This comes up a lot when we talk about metabolic rate, for example, with ectotherms, but um, it's just very useful. And what we'll use is a kind of a, a, a trick or an equation from chemistry called the Van Hoff equation, which is on your temperature handout right here. Okay, and what it describes is um, the how much the rates change. If you ha if you know a rate at a particular temperature and you want to know what the rate is at a different temperature and you know what the Q10 constant is, then you can actually um, figure out what that would be. Okay, so I'll show you how it works. We take the Van Hoff, Van Hoff equation here. Okay, so, um, so generally we will know what the Q10 is and for most biological reactions, it's about 2.5. And it's a dimensionless number because what it is is really just the ratio. Um, it, it's it's just sort of a ratio of two num uh, two rates raised to an exponent determined by the temperatures. Okay, so um, suppose we want to solve for R two. Okay, so our task is going to be to solve solve for R2 at temperature 2 and we have given R1 at temperature 1 and a Q10. Okay, so we can just do a, a rearrangement of this equation and so in order to First of all, we want to get rid of this exponent, right? So how do you do the inverse of that operation? Well, you just raise it to the inverse of that power. So T2 minus T1 over 10. Okay, so it's T2 minus T1 over 10, both sides. Now, if, if you, when you look at this Van Hoff equation, what it's doing is describing how fast the reaction increases per um, 10 degrees change in temperature. But you can calculate it between any two temperatures if you just provide the T2 and the T1. Okay, back to our solution. So then um, the exponent count cancels here, right? And then we have R2 over R1 equals Q10 to the T2 minus T1 over 10 power. Okay, so now if we just multiply both sides by R1 and rearrange, we get the solution um, R2 equals R1 times Q10 raised to the T2 minus T1 power over 10. And again, um, this is typically, Q10 is typically about 2.5. And um, so for example, if we know the metabolic rate at 20, if we know the metabolic rate at 20 and we want to know the metabolic rate at 25 Celsius, then we just plug in R1 and then um, 25 for T2 and 20 for T1 and solve with Q10 at 2.5. Now, it's really, really important that you make sure that you put the T T1 associated with the R1 in the right place and the T2, the temperature associated with R2 in the right place. Um, that's really, really important. And it doesn't matter whether um, T1 is lower or T2 is lower, but they just have to match the corresponding metabolic rates. Okay, so um, 
but that that's pretty much it so for example if we have a lizard um, if we have the standard metabolic rate of a lizard of a 20 gram lizard and remember standard metabolic rate is at um, a temperature a body temperature of 20 degrees Celsius so this is always for SMR that's what makes it standard right and we have a whole bunch of scaling equations from Withers and so the SMR for across all lizards is 1.5 m to the 0 0.8 power where mass is in grams and SMR is in joules per hour So if we plug in the 20 grams, we get 16.48 joules per hour. Okay, so now what is metabolic rate at T equals 25? Okay, so we just, we can solve for, um, so, so if SMR is HM at 20, so HM at 20 is R1 and that means T1 equals 20 Celsius, right? So R2 is gonna be HM at 25, that will be R2, so naturally T2 is 25 Celsius. So then we just plug in R2 We have R2 equals R1 times Q10 T2 minus T1 over 10. So uh, that just turns out to be, okay, so, um, so that's going to be 16.48 right, which is the R1 and times 2.5 raised to the, so T2 is 25 minus 20 over 10 power. Okay, so if we pull out our calculators, So we have two point raised. Okay, so that turns up that turns out to be twenty six point oh six joules per hour. Okay, so HM, so the metabolic rate at 25, five degrees raised in temperature is quite a bit higher than the metabolic rate at 20. It's almost, well, it's not quite double, but It's like 1.6 times higher, so quite a bit higher, okay? So that's how um, we can calculate the metabolic rate at a different temperature, either higher or lower. You just have to match the temperatures to the metabolic rates.